WrestleMania 40 and it kicks off with pure carnage. It's the six pack tag team ladder match with the titles on the line hanging high in the air. 12 superstars vying to be the one to bring them down. And it's complete chaos, high risk and high reward. It's incredibly hard to keep up with all the action and there are bodies flying everywhere. But it ultimately comes down to two teams, the defending champions and the awesome truth. But The Miz and Finn Balor are juking it out on top of the ladder, fighting over the titles. But down below, Priest nails Truth with a kick and he stumbles into the ladder, knocking Miz and Finn off and they crash through a table. But he bounces back and accidentally takes out Priest over the top rope and it leaves Truth all alone and the crowd lifts. Truth looks around, the crowd are screaming at him to climb. He's a little bit confused, but he does. He gets to the top and pulls down the titles. The awesome truth are once again tag team champions and the crowd goes nuts. It's a wholesome and feel good moment to start the show, but a match that will be significantly less wholesome and feel good is up next. It's Knight versus Styles and it's just as intense and chaotic as the opener. These two hate each other with a burning passion and this new and aggressive and ruthless AJ Styles takes it all the way up to Knight. He takes him to the outside and he takes the low road. But it gets even worse. AJ rips the turnbuckle pad off purely to distract the referee. And as the referee is fixing it, he throws Knight to the outside and grabs a chair. He throws the chair at Knight and smashes it off his face. And then Styles sends Knight back into the ring. But as the referee turns around, he sees AJ Styles with the chair, grabs it off him and throws it to the outside. But Knight has recovered and he leaps off with a flying blockbuster. And then he sets him up and lands the BFT. But nah nah, he isn't done. He lands the mega star elbow and picks up the win. It's crafty, it's well played, and he shows just whose game it is. But as Knight is celebrating the win, we see a team that hopes to have a big win later in the night as well. And it's Cody and Seth who arrive and a stop for comment. And Cody says, we're in the bottom of the ninth. Regardless of what they say, this is a tied game. But tonight, will be the first step in ending all of this. And Seth chimes in and says, it's time for everyone to pay the piper. <laughs> They're ready for war, but another man who'll have to be as well is Sami Zayn, who is up next to face the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion of all time to try and end his history-making run. And after taking some pointers from Chad Gable, who has blatantly said that he doesn't think Sammy can do it, he ventures out to try and prove everyone wrong, takes it to Gunther with speed and accuracy. And with Chad Gable seen watching on from the back, he sees Sammy get incredibly close from blue thunderbombs and even a violent halluva kick. He just can't keep him down. He knows he has to go for broke though, and he sets up Gunther, and he wants a top rope brain buster to end it all. But Gunther reverses and actually manages to get Sammy up for an avalanche power bomb. Sammy gets picked up right away, and he power bombs him again. But he isn't finished. He continuously power bombs him over and over and over until the referee decides to call the match because Sammy isn't defending himself. He isn't stopping there. He continues to powerbomb Sami Zayn all over the ring. It's decimation at its absolute most evil. But then Chad Gable runs down to make the save, but with the damage already done, it's far too late. Gunther leaves with the championship reign still intact, and then we see backstage the arrival, the tribal chief, and the final boss. And huge boos ring out and they're asked for comment as well, but they decline. However, the wise man Paul Heyman does have some words and he says, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Heyman. 
and I have a brief but very serious message for Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. Tonight, we ruin not only night one for you, but night two as well. Because I promise, after tonight, we make everything right and the bloodline story continues as we intended. And it's the way it's gonna have to be. Including right now, when Jimmy Uso dominates his brother Jay. And that's not a prediction, that's a spoiler. There is sibling rivalries, and then there is this. And it's the first step in the attempted bloodline takeover of WrestleMania Philadelphia. It's easily the most emotional match of the night, but that increases even more when Solo comes out and he's threatening to get involved. But before he can, Nick Aldis arrives and says, Oh, gentlemen, I forgot to mention, when this match was made official, I took it upon myself to enlist a special guest referee. It's Rikishi! He's gonna officiate the match! He's gonna stand in between his two sons and keep an eye on his other. And the battle is absolutely raging! The two brothers do not hold back whatsoever! They throw bombs at each other! And when Solo tries to interject, he is told in no uncertain terms by his father to step back. He holds the whole thing in place and it paves the way for a fair fight and as the match culminates, we see the brothers with nothing left in the tank. They're throwing bombs. Jimmy super kicks Jay. Jay super kicking Jimmy and it goes back and forth and back and forth. Who will wilt? Who will fall? It's Jay who literally collapses onto Jimmy and Rikishi makes the count. It's all over and right after the match, Jay doesn't even really celebrate. He just looks at his father and he's face to face now with his brothers. And Rikishi says, you fought it out like men, now we forgive each other like family. Jimmy and Solo, still under the thumb of the bloodline, walking out on their own blood. But Rikishi doesn't look like he wants to give up on his sons just yet. But that's going to have to wait. We don't have to wait, however, for the co-main event of night one, when Bailey faces the very group she started trying to capture the WWE Women's Championship. And of course, EO Sky is accompanied by the entire group that Bailey handpicked, and they all want a piece. Bailey gets a taste of her own medicine that she dished out for a long time with them. The crowd is behind her. They want to see the underdog overcome the odds. But it all seems completely lost because the numbers are just too much until backup arrives. Damage control are thwarted by their opponents for night two. Jade, Bianca and Naomi brawl with all of them. And as damage control lose control, Bailey seizes it. Eo looks for a moonsault, but Bailey avoids and she nails a rose plant. But then she looks around at the crowd and they all want to see it. She calls Eo to her feet and nails her with a Bailey to belly. She pins Eo and Bailey wins it. She goes from winning the Royal Rumble to winning the championship at WrestleMania. We'll have to wait and see if Jade, Bianca and Naomi can topple the rest of Damage Control on night two. But for now, the moment belongs to Bailey. But there's still one more massive moment and a massive match to culminate night one. It's on, one of the biggest tag team matches in history. Roman and Seth kick it off, and there's a lot of feeling. No one wants to be the one to make the mistake, but it's Roman that takes control of the match, and he's enjoying it. And even though The Rock is looking for the tag, Roman ignores it. And the opposite side, Cody wants the tag to relieve Seth, but he can't get it. But we get a turning point. 
Rollins gets the shot that he needs on Roman with a revolution knee, and both men are down. And now, they're both crawling towards their partners. They both desperately need the tag. But Roman gets to rock first, and the great one is in. But he runs across, grabs Rollins, and now he has Seth all to himself, and Cody is gonna have to wait even more. And as the punishment continues, the rock saves it all. He plays it up to the crowd, and Roman wants in again, but this time, it's The Rock ignoring him. And he's just soaking it all in. And right, as Cody is desperately trying to get in the match, The Rock sprints across and knocks him off the apron. And then, continues the punishment. It's not looking good at all for the revolutionary. But down on the outside, and now getting back to his feet, is Cody Rhodes, who desperately wants in the fight. But instead of going to the apron, he goes after Roman. He pulls him down off the apron, and now they're fighting it out on the outside, but it leaves Seth at the mercy of The Rock. But it's late in the match that we get the twist in the tail, because Cody is now back on the apron, desperate to get into the match finally. And Rollins gets separation from The Rock, and manages to get the all-important tag. Cody's in, and he finally gets his hands on The Rock. He's on fire, lashing out at the Tribal Chief and the final boss. And as he goes to knock Roman off the apron, The Rock takes the chance to get a cheap shot in from behind and then tosses Cody to the outside. And Cody is trying to get back to his feet like he has been all match when the unthinkable happens. He said that everyone was going to pay the price. The crowd can't believe it. Rawlins leaves, and The Rock grabs Cody, throws him in the ring, and Roman lines him up and spears him. He leaves him laying, primed and ready for the final boss to finish him off with a people's elbow. The odds for night two are now stacked completely against Cody. He now has to face bloodline rules. Anything goes. The Rock celebrates the win with Roman Reigns. And The Rock soaks up all the adulation, but we know the job isn't done as we head into a combustible night two. It's time to kick off night two with Orton, Owens and Logan Paul vying for the Mavericks United States Championship. And when it gets underway, Logan immediately dips out of the ring and starts playing to the crowd. But what he doesn't realize is Orton and Owens have not even started fighting yet. And as he turns around, he knows he's screwed. Owens goes after Logan, but he runs away. But Orton was waiting and he nails Logan and then picks him up and bounces him off the barricade. Orton sends him into the ring, and now Logan is getting demolished by both Orton and Owens. They're trading shots back and forth on the Maverick, sealed with a power slam from Orton that sends Logan out of the ring. And then the time comes for Orton and Owens to have to square off, and they fire at each other the only way they know how. But as the match reaches the final stages, Owens and Orton have done all the heavy lifting. And Logan sneaks his way back into the match and he's able to get on top of both. He hits them both with cheap shots and then starts playing it up to the crowd again. He goes to the top. He wants to finish off Owens with the frog splash, but as he leaps off, he gets caught out of nowhere with an RKO. But Orton doesn't have time to cover it because Owens hits him with a stunner. He makes the cover. One, two, no. Orton kicks out. Owens can't believe it, and Orton desperately rolls out of the ring, but on the outside, Logan is stirring. And just as quickly as Orton rolls out, Logan gets in, and he looks to hit Owens with the brass knuckles, but Owens reverses, grabs him off his head, and nails Logan with them. Logan is out cold. Owens comes full circle and beats Logan Paul at his own game. He takes the United States Championship, and the rivalry ends with Kevin Owens triumphant. But another rivalry that needs to culminate is up next, when we have a six-man tag team match built purely on personal animosity. 
and Dominic leads a team of Andrade and Santos Escobar into battle against a Rey Mysterio led team of Dragon Lee and Carlito. And this battle is full of incredible professional wrestling. The talent is off the charts. It's high flying. It's a genuine Lucha Masterclass. And everyone brings their A game. But in all the chaos, it comes down to two. It's Santos and Rey Mysterio. And they're duking it out. And Rey Mysterio gets on top of the battle. And Santos is in position for a 619. He springs off and nails it. He goes up top and he drops the time. It's all over. The only problem being is Santos isn't the legal man. Dominic is. And now he has a 619 for Ray. And Dom goes up and he wants to finish it with a frog splash. He leaps off and hits it. But not only that, he puts his feet up on the ropes for the pin and makes sure of it by taking the low road. Dominic makes it 1-1 at WrestleMania between he and his father. And it's despicable. It's dirty. But this is Dirty Dom, and he, nor Santos, nor Andrade, could care less. They pick up the win, but you know it's far from over between father and son, just like it's far from over between Cody and Seth. Because we see Cody storming through backstage looking for Rollins, he's absolutely beside himself. But he gets stopped by Jey Uso, who didn't have such a bad night last night, and he says, hey, Cody, you've got to chill, man. You've got the biggest match of your life coming up tonight and you're wasting all this energy looking for Seth Rollins. Don't worry about Seth Rollins. Focus on Roman Reigns. Focus on my family because this is bloodline rules, Zeus. They're gonna be hunting you, but I've got your back. And Cody does focus up and he walks off to prepare for the massive match. But as he walks off, boom! Jay gets wiped out by Solo Sokoa and Jimmy Uso, and he gets absolutely decimated. Shot after shot after shot with a steel chair. Will he even be able to be there for Cody now? There's got to be massive doubt. There is no doubt that the next match is one of the most anticipated of the entire weekend. Two of the most dominant women in the world. Two of the most popular. Two of the most talented. And it is on. Becky is a spitfire, throwing everything at Rhea in the early stages. She knows she has to keep the pace as much as possible to wear the nightmare down. But can she keep this pace up? The answer is a resounding no. Because Rhea cuts her off and takes control. Just like we've seen so many times before. Rhea throws Becky around everywhere. She gets on the outside and Rhea drives Becky through the announce table with a riptide. But then, disrespectfully, Rhea just gets in the ring, allowing the referee to start the count. She's trying to show Becky that she doesn't have what it takes to get back in the fight this time. And the referee's count is of seven, and then eight, and then nine, but Becky scrapes her way back into the ring. But right away, Rio grabs her, picks her up for a riptide, but Becky snatches the arm, and now she's got the disarmor locked in. Rhea screams out in pain. Becky is wrenching. She's hell-bent on not letting this one go, but she's forced to because Rhea breaks it with raw strength. She grabs her, loads her up on the top, and she wants to finish her off with an avalanche riptide. But no, Becky counters, snatches the arm again, and has a disarmor locked in over the top rope. Rhea is in desperate trouble. Becky scrambles back into the ring, picks her up, hits her with a manhandle slam. One, two, no! Rhea kicks out, but as she does, Becky snatches the arm again. She's got it locked in. Rhea is screaming once more. She's got to have nothing left in that shoulder. Becky won't let it go. She will not let it slip through her hands, but she doesn't. She doesn't let it go, but Rhea somehow, someway, muscles her up and turns it into a riptide for the ages. Rhea Ripley pins Becky Lynch and retains, but it's only by the narrowest of margins. Becky is left heartbroken on the floor as Mummy shows exactly why she's always on top. Cody Rhodes, time is almost here, boy. Time for you to bleed. Time for the bloodline to stand over your beaten, battered body. 
and you say all this bullshit about more than one royal family. That's horse shit, and you know it. Because there's only one royal family, and that's our family. The Rhodes family, you know damn well that off is the direction you can f This is our time. Our WrestleMania. And we're bringing our army. And Cody, <laughs> feel free to bring what's left of yours. Which won't be that walking clown emoji, Seth Rollins, who's shown his true colors. So let's show yours. Blood red. Stained all over the mat. Let's finish this war. Mama Rhodes, we're coming. You smell the bloodline and the final boss is cooking. As The Rock said, Seth Rollins will not be going into bat for Cody Rhodes because he's put all of that aside and is fully focused on Drew McIntyre. But is Drew fully focused on Seth? Because as promised, there is a guest commentator. CM Punk will be calling the action and you can feel the tension as the match gets underway. Drew is clearly very annoyed that Punk is there but he carries on regardless. Seth and Drew put on an absolute banger. The power of McIntyre is on full display as he manhandles Seth. And he really takes out all the pent up anger on him in a big way. But Seth uses his smarts and his speed to even things up. The tension is too much. Punk is talking so much trash on commentary while both men are brawling on the outside that Drew snaps and he gets in Punk's face and it's all threatening to boil over. Punk continues to go Drew in as well, but he's taken Drew's attention away from the bigger problem. And Seth nails him with a pedigree on the outside, throws him in the ring and he wants to hit a stop to finish it off. He runs up, but Drew is on his feet and he nails him with a future shock DDT for a one, a two, but no, Seth is able to kick out, but only barely, and now Drew goes to the other corner, and he wants to finish him off with a claymore. But as he gets there, in his peripheral vision, isn't the visionary, it's CM Punk. And Drew turns to him and says, I want you to describe this to the world in great detail. Tell them that Drew McIntyre is the new Rollins is back up! Drew took his eye off the prize! He wasn't focused on Rollins! And he nails him with a second rope stomp! And it turns the lights out on Drew McIntyre! Seth Rollins retains! And in a cruel twist of fate, it's actually Rollins who was fully focused and not Drew McIntyre. And McIntyre snaps! He runs in the ring and he claymores Seth Rollins! And then he continues the beatdown! Shot after shot after shot! Rollins is completely out cold! And Drew McIntyre walks off, paving the way for something spectacular. Damien Priest is here to ruin the party for Seth Rollins! CM Punk is watching on! He can't believe what he's seeing either! Damien Priest! Cashes in, the bell rings, he picks him up, it's south of heaven time, it's gonna be all over, but through comes Drew McIntyre again, a claymore to Damien Priest, it's unbelievable, Priest is down, and somehow, Rollins gets over, makes the cover, and Priest's cash in is a failure because of Drew McIntyre. It is extraordinary. It is a turn up for the box. And while McIntyre wasn't focused on Rollins fully, he was on Damien Priest in that moment. And it is an unbelievable climax to this match. And after all that chaos, we see backstage Roman Reigns gearing up for the biggest match of his career alongside Paul Heyman. But the bloodline is staying busy because The Rock has ordered Solo and Jimmy to destroy more of the potential front lines of Cody Rhodes, and they take it to Sami Zayn and obliterate him. They leave him battered in a puddle of his own blood, and The Rock looks on and says, Cody, this blood is on your hands, and soon your blood will be on ours. Time is coming, boy. The final boss and the tribal chief are on our way. A strong message 
Cody seems to be going into the battle alone. But there are six women who don't have to do the same. And it's the team of Jade Cargill, Bianca Belair and Naomi as they try and thwart damage control. And it's a fast and frenetic match. Bianca shows exactly why she's the EST. Naomi glows as well. And Dakota tries all the underhanded tactics she can. Asuka and Kyrie are menacing as always. The real breakout performance and star making belongs to Jade Cargill, who while Bailey is distracting Dakota Kai, has Asuka and Kyrie in her clutches. Jade Cargill with one of the most impressive feats of strength we've ever seen. She pits Kyrie Sane and wins the match for her team. She's backed up an incredible Royal Rumble debut with a WrestleMania moment. Bailey walks out of WrestleMania as champion and being able to see the demise of damage control. culmination of one of the biggest rivalries in modern history. Rhodes face to face with Reigns and it's one on one for now. And they go at each other with the ferocity you'd imagine given how personal it's all gotten. It's easily the most hard hitting match of the weekend as both men wrestled the night before but you can't even tell. They absolutely batter each other with everything in their arsenal. And with it being bloodline rules, there are no rules and they use that to their advantage as well. It's extremely taxing, but very quickly, we start to see Roman Reigns struggling against the hungry and desperate Cody, which of course, brings out the first line of defense as Jimmy and Solo arrive. And all of a sudden, it's three on one and the match turns on its head. Cody gets absolutely destroyed. He's got no help, there's no one left. He's being demolished by the Chief and his tribe. Just as Roman is about to finish Cody off, he gets stopped. The Rock is here, and he wants one last look at Cody before Roman puts him away. Cody is a bloodied mess. The Rock says, it's time to show Mama Rhodes what a little boy is made of. It's time to show Mama Rhodes what happens when you fuck with the final boss. But as The Rock is standing over him, Jay limps out. He's hurt, but he's trying. And very quickly, he's taken out by Jimmy. And The Rock laughs and says, "Fucking <laughs> pathetic. Look at your boy. Thinking you stood a chance. Thinking you could call The Rock and take something from The Rock, huh? But Cody somehow gets up to his feet. He looks The Rock in the eye and says, you weren't the only person I called. Cena, he runs out and makes a beeline for Solo who took him out in the first place. They're fighting it out on the outside and Cena nails it with an AA. And as he turns his attention now towards the ring, he gets hammered with a chair by the rock. Solo gets up and now he's holding Cena, all while Jimmy is holding Jay. And now The Rock turns his attention back to Cody Rhodes and says, Are you fucking kidding me? John Cena. This is embarrassing. Let's put this jabroni away. He's in full BMF walk mode and he stuns Jimmy. He stuns Solo and now he's in the ring and he has one for The Rock. It's completely come unglued at the arena. Chang takes Jimmy out of there. Cena grabs Solo and he gets him out of there as well. Roman watches on as Austin takes The Rock away. And just like that, he's a chief without a tribe. Cody made more than one call to more than one legend, but he's still in trouble because Roman focuses up and he's gonna look for the final spear. He charges it up, 
runs at Cody, but no, he catches him and lands the crossroads. And another, and another. And with no one there to stop him this time, Cody pins Roman Reigns and the Philly crowd is on its feet. Cody is in tears. He finally grasps the championship that eluded his family. And while he can't hand it to Dusty, he certainly can hand it to Mama Rhodes. And he certainly can now say he's finished the story. <laughs>